Endless Dungeon is extremely easy to get into, but before you know it, the depth of the mechanics and the systems from multiple genres overlap to create something that is incredibly rewarding to master and addicting to play. However, Endless Dungeon is still loaded with atmosphere thanks to its new art style, its great lighting, audio direction that gives the weapons a hefty crunch, and the station a soul, topped off with an unbelievable soundtrack that perfectly captures the feeling of isolation and being lost in space with a band of misfits. With the many genres that are blended into Endless Dungeon, the learning is, well, endless. Every door that you open gains your team resources, which is then either used to upgrade, build, or research. There is a risk-reward scenario as opening the door raises the danger level in which direction waves can now come. So sometimes, despite needing the resources, it makes more sense to leave certain doors shut. The objective of each floor is simple, get the crystal bot who holds the key to your success to the end of the level. The issue is that anytime you need your crystal bot to mine crystal, unlock doors, or open an elevator, waves of enemies get thrown at you. If your bot dies, you get sent back to the saloon, and the loop starts from the beginning. The biggest issue is the story or lack thereof. You are a group of galaxy traveling misfits and you get stuck in some type of Bermuda space triangle prison. And the way to get out is to get your crystal bot to the core. The game is available in three player co-op, which is probably the best way to play it right now, but you can also play it solo with two AI controlled teammates that you can switch to at any point in time. Endless Dungeon does work pretty great in solo, but the main issue is that your friendly AI doesn't work as well as they should. Each character has unique abilities, but they rarely use them. One of the other issues tied to this is how each character has a passive, special, and ultimate abilities. All of the icons for abilities are stars and lightning bolts, so when you are playing solo and you need to hot swap between your characters to use the healing bubble because the AI won't do it, it would be helpful if the icons for the abilities were more representative of actually what they did. There is also a lack of turret research stations in the game, and with a game dependent on using the right tool for the job, I should have the option to research to get the tools that I need. With the levels being procedurally generated, this can sometimes be unfair RNG. And if I'm constantly facing bugs who are weak against poison, I need to be able to research a poison turret. With a more meaningful story incorporated into the main gameplay and a few quality of life changes, Endless Dungeon probably could have been one of the best games of the year. But instead, we'll probably have to settle for being one of the best roguelites of 2023. Although it does seem somewhat unfair to put a label on Endless Dungeon because it's just as much of a tower defense as it is a dungeon crawler or a turn-based strategy or even a top-down shooter. The blending of all of these genres into a formula that was unique and addicting in 2013 is still fresh and addicting today.